So, um, obviously, we have Julian here. You're most famous for, I should imagine, your TV programme, Meet the Ancestors. How did you kind of get into that? Was it something you wanted to do, or did it just kind of happen? No, I, I didn't set out with any um, idea of getting onto television. It was just something that happened, really, through uh, an involvement with Stonehenge, because I got involved in making a programme about how Stonehenge was built for the BBC. I've, I've been seeing a lot. Stonehenge seems to be a bit of a passion of yours. You've written four books. Yes, and, yeah. I mean, Obsession, I think, is probably <laughs> uh, more, the, more the way of defining it. But it's, it's just because it's fascinating. I mean, as an archaeologist, obviously, I'm... I'm really interested in it and the way that different people have interpreted it and also the way that our ideas about it are changing. But it's also a place that attracts lots of strange and interesting people and ideas <laughs> as well. So it's, it's really good fun. I mean, history and archaeology and all that kind of things in general, was that something you knew you wanted to do or was it something that kind of... No, I, I, I was always interested in old things. Yeah. from a very early age and did history at school but didn't find it very exciting and I really fell into archaeology after I'd left school with some terrible A-levels and, and the first time I went to work on an excavation you know, I had one of those eureka moments where I thought this is what I want to do um, because it involved you know, discovery and excitement and, and objects that you could connect to people from the past as well and I think that's what... And a lot of the things you've done as well I mean like um, your TV show, for instance, and I think you did one, worked on one with um, Stonehenge as well. That's a lot more interactive, would you say, and that would get people, like different people, involved. Well, I've always, right from the start, when I, when I after I graduated, I'd always done a lot of teaching and evening classes and gone to talk to groups, you know, local groups and things like that. And I suppose doing television programmes is just like a massive extension of that. But instead of talking to 30 people in a village hall somewhere, you're, you've got the opportunity to talk to 3 million people, you know, or admittedly, you know, remotely, but through a television. So I think if you've got the enthusiasm, which I'd like to think that I have, um, then, and, and a passion for a subject, then it's a great medium to, to put that over. You've, you've done over 40 shows and goodness knows what else. I mean, you've travelled quite, quite widely. It's not... It's not as if you've stayed in the same place doing the same things. You've had lots of different challenges and experiences. How's that been, going to all of the different places and seeing all these I think I think what was so great about doing the, the television and radio stuff was the fact that it, I suppose, it got me out of what was a very pleasant little niche down in Wessex and working, you know, and looking at the prehistory of Stonehenge and the prehistory of Wessex. And it took me to a lot of very far-flung places that I wouldn't normally have gone to. So I think it's been very good for me because it's broadened my horizons and made me think more about how what I'm familiar with fits in with a, a, a broader view, with a world view. And you've mentioned a lot about Stonehenge and prehistory, which you're obviously really like, passionate about. But is there anything else that's through the series kind of just caught your attention and you've kind of like almost fell in love with that as well and wanted to that's caught your imagination or is it just history in general archaeology I, I think I think I'm a real generalist in that there are things that I do really find fascinating and I mean the Neolithic and the, the age of Stonehenge is one but and also the sort of Saxon Viking period is another but I, I can just find something to be fascinated about in so many periods whether they're quite recent um, or not, so uh, I, I don't know. I keep you can't finding really more, decide. I, it's no, also I mean, amazing. I, the most recent thing that I was involved with was some work on a World War Two uh, American base in Nottingham. Where That's I came radically from. different to Stonehenge. Very, you know, and I did a program about Concord uh, a couple of years ago about how Concord was built. And talking to the original engineers who designed and built that was fantastic because they were just amazing people with amazing stories to tell. So it doesn't need to be back in prehistory to be fascinating. I, I, I'm really shocked by that. I wouldn't have thought that... I, I would have assumed that it wouldn't just be prehistory, but that's really, really, well, yeah. relatively well, recent. Well, I mean, I know it's a cliche, but, I mean, history starts yesterday, doesn't it? And, right. and, you know, looking back, even, you know, at my age, you look back on your childhood, and it's so radically different to the way children live today. Uh, and even sort of, you know, to explaining to sort of kids of seven or eight you know, about what, what your <laughs> childhood was like, you sort of think, this sounds like prehistory, you know, because <laughs> you're asking them to remember what it was like, you know, to, to have an, a childhood without 
a PlayStation and, you know, without you know, a mobile phone and things like that. And they can't imagine that. It's a different world. 